This week on The Breaking News, LEGO Masters returns, and they're setting their sights on the moon. We also kick off the Christmas season with the latest sets, and LEGO racks in a few of the toy awards. We're going to talk about that all today on The Breaking News, so stick around. But first, I want to talk about a really cool store, a Brick Monarch Shop. This website is designed for all those AFLs out there that are looking for some great t-shirts with classic logos, some home decor you can put on your walls, such as shields, and some other great iconic aspects from the LEGO history. You can head over to the link in our description for Brick Monarch Shop, and you can get a discount of 10% off using Back to Brick 10. That's Brack 2 Brick 10, the number 2. So head over there so you can get some really cool AFL swag. All right, now let's get to the breaking news. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hey, everybody, Breaking welcome news. back to Back to Break. I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow Aples about their Lego design, and we get down to the breaking news every week to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week. Thank you all for joining me. All those Lego studs out there, those are my dedicated listeners. Thank you for coming back. If you're new to the podcast, it's air quotes, great to see you, air quotes, and I appreciate that you're taking the time out of your day to listen to this and hopefully gain some knowledge on what Lego's been up to for the past week. And first, I always like to start off with a little bit of admin. One thing that I've been working on is trying to keep my Instagram presence up on Back to Brick 2. It has been difficult as the algorithms continue to change and I'm just trying to promote people's work as well as start to promote my own, which I think I'm going to start doing on my own personal Instagram page, so I'll have to update that. Now, if any of you have work that you'd like to promote, and it can be absolutely anything, there's no no requirement to have something like 10,000 pieces and the best thing you've ever done. If you build something this weekend that took you like an hour and you really enjoyed doing it, that's what you should do. I, I think it's really fun to just continue to build and create when you want. So I will, of course, share that with all of my followers. And then you can get some recognition for the work that you've done. We're continuing to create. That is the goal. The movie podcast is on hold for a second because my wife is working through her engineer, professional engineering to class that prepares her for this test, which is nine hours long. Yes, you heard me right, nine hours. So there are a few episodes that I'll be putting out just to test the waters to see if people like it, and I'll post the link in the description for average moviegoers. So you can check that out this weekend if you're up to listening to us babble on about Lego movies and give us give our average review of that movie. And then concerning the podcast and Back to Break brand itself, I'm looking to do some physical products. I'd love to get some insight on what you guys think. I will be, um, you have my email, back to T.O. Brick at gmail.com. If you have anything you're really interested in seeing Lego like, uh, let me know. I like quality items, so I'm thinking about some quality t-shirts and hats, but there's always more things, and I, I like your input because that's who I'm catering to and what I want to be is a great provider of products that people in this LEGO community and on the podcast like to have. I'm continuing to work hard on my commission work and trying to just keep creating and building, which is constant as I also, I'm applying for new jobs because I'm still here at Disney, but I, I don't get a job right away. I got to apply and do the do the footwork. So keep my fingers crossed, and I hope you guys keep your fingers crossed for me that I, I get a job and can transition out of the military smoothly into another job. And also, at the end of the breaking news, I'm going to do a segment that I'm going to try out. This one is going to be kind of a breakdown of a set review. It's not going to be long but I'd like to talk through one and see what the reaction is. If you like it, let me know. And if you hate it, also let me know, because then I will adjust and not do that again. Now, that was a really long-winded admin section, so I will get right into the breaking news. There is a LEGO fan event now going on in Denmark. It's called the Skarbik Fan Weekend, which I, I've i never heard of. Well, that's not true. I have heard of it, but I didn't know when it was, and I still don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's one of the biggest fan uh, events in Europe. Over a 1,000 AFOLs come from all over the world to do it. It's not that far from Billen, so you, it kicks off Thursday night at the LEGO house, 
And with tons of special events, people can go and listen to speakers and get to do fun builds. I would love to go next year. That's now the goal. I told my wife, she's like, okay, they have a bunch of games, uh, different shopping events. I think one of the things they had was this really cool 3D printed model of the wooden duck that's minifigure scale. Well, not super small, but a little bit bigger than that. It's very, very cool. Um, if somebody wants to, you know, do the 3D design and I will print it for you, we could do that and start selling because I think that would be awesome. But if you're going, I hope you enjoy it and uh, post all kinds of pictures and talk about it because uh, I'd love to see how the weekend goes. It seems that the LEGO VIP Rewards Center had some discounts recently. Uh, they discounted the Optimus Prime, the Lion Knight's Castle, and the Robot in uh, Inventor set. Uh, you could swap 100 points for a larger discount. So I don't see it in the United States, but it looks like for the Euro pound and Australia, you could change uh, upwards of 30 to $45 with just a 100 point swap, which that's insane. I like, I mean, you'd have to buy the set, but that saves you a good bit of cash buying this set or one of the three sets. I think out of the three, I'd probably buy the Lion Knight's Castle because it's just a, it's a really classic set. And the other two are very nice and at a lower price point. So those are all options, and if you haven't done so, you can go check it out on the reward center to see if it is still active. The LEGO Group walked out with a good five awards from the Toy of the Year Awards. There were a total of five, as I said. The Collectible of the Year was the Muppets minifigure series. Construction Toy of the Year was the I Am Groot, which kind of surprising. Uh, I, I, like, I like it, but I guess there could have been another thing. I don't know. Grown-up toy of the year is The Office. Well, that's because everybody loves The Office except, except me, um, and my wife still hasn't taken time to watch it, so I guess both of us. Playset of the year was The Adventures with Peach. Um, that's their Super Mario set, and it was very highly hyped. It was um, having, instead of just Mario and Luigi, having Peach as a digi figure too. Uh, was probably a big draw to this and vehicle of the year was the mclaren formula one race car so this is their large-scale technic set and formula one has been extremely popular so this is not surprising i really like the design it's very clean uh, for a technic scale and i like the super car sets more but if you're a formula one fan i would definitely pick this up so this is their five of the year they did do a uh, late of 2021 and they won two so it's a total of seven right now and they're going to continue to do this I think as they continue to make more and more really unique sets and adapt to some of the designs the Bowser is definitely really cool so that might be a contender for next year so I guess we'll stick around and find out how many more awards Lego gets for some awesome sets there are a few qualified Lego master builders around the world and one is Sean Kenny He's created some amazing full-scale work, and a lot of it has been catered to just upscaling the real world. And right now, he actually has a Nature Connects made with Lego bricks exhibit. It's going to be displayed in the Houston Botanical Garden. There's quite a few that are just really beautiful photos. We've got a bald eagle. We've got a large-scale hummingbird, um, which is hanging outside of the flower. So there's definitely some steel structures in there. Um, some other flowered areas, and it's going to be there from September 24th through Sunday, February 19th. So if you are in the Houston area, this is some cool way to just get outside to see some flowers and also Lego build flowers. Jurassic Park ended a little while ago, but Jurassic World just ended this past year. But Lego is continuing to do the um, licensing for Jurassic World through 2023. Not sure what the future will hold from there. But a big bit of news is Jurassic Park is turning 30. That's 30 years ago, the Steven Spielberg hit came out uh, by Daniel Craig. Uh, and the book is, is a little bit different than the movie. I think I like the movie more. Anyways, they're going to celebrate in some way. And this is what they said at uh, Licensing Global. Jurassic Park is where it all started, and it remains the cornerstone of the brand. And we'll be celebrating the film's 30th anniversary in a big way next year, capitalizing on the nostalgia and iconic, icon, iconic, 
iconography, there we go, that generates a fan's love. So what's it going to be? They did a really nice diorama, but then we have to think about what are some iconic parts from Jurassic Park. And I'm going to go with the Jurassic Park Jeep, um, maybe larger larger scale, maybe not the, um, the one that gets stepped on, but the other just smaller Jeep. But I'm leaning more towards the visitor center, which we've been asking for for years. And I think it's a great opportunity to do that now, celebrating the 30th anniversary and having uh, the skeleton in there and a velociraptor with a kitchen scene. Ooh, a diorama of the kitchen scene would be really cool too. I guess we'll find out. Uh, I love Jurassic Park and I hope they bring it back to theaters for this 30th anniversary. Lego Masters finally made its premiere and season three kicked off with a bang, like a rocket bang. They moved the date till this fall, probably for ratings and trying to grab a different set of audiences. Um, and I think that it might be a good move. I guess we'll find out. Um, there's 12 teams, if you don't know how it is, it's 12 teams and they compete for a Lego trophy of $100,000, which I'm pretty sure they keep increasing. But that's a good chunk of money and you can buy a lot of Lego sets with that. Um, now their goal this week was to build a Lego rocket and the winner, uh, well, first it would take under 13 hours and the winner got to display at the Lego center at Cape Canaveral and they actually got to meet a real life astronaut and do the build. Now I personally didn't watch, I don't have cable, honestly, who does have cable anymore, but I've probably, I've seen a few of the highlights on YouTube, some great builds and some great contestants. So I would recommend if you do have cable to watch it or check the highlights on YouTube and follow along for this season. Remember when Lego did its first augmented reality with the hidden side sets where some of the builds you could bring up your phone and do some rea augmented reality of like, oh, this is cool, this is what's happening. Well, um, that was canceled back in 2021 and the app is still going for now. It's expected to, to be deleted on 2023. I have to inform you that the Lego Hidden Side app will be discontinued with the start of 2023. Multiplayer servers will become unavailable, which means it will be impossible to start new games. You can still enjoy the game for the whole of 2022, which is not that much longer. Um, but I wanted to inform you of this important change. It makes sense. It's expensive. And the brand isn't around anymore. So why continue to push for it? people might be able to download it. I don't actually know how that works for an app, but if you like Hidden Side, this is the time to keep playing until 2023. Lego has officially revealed its Winter Village set for 2023. It's set 10308 Holiday Main Street. This is gonna sell for about $100 and it's gonna be available for VIPs on October 3rd and have 1,514 pieces. Now it has two buildings, a Christmas tree, a little post with a mailbox to send letters to Santa, and a trolley. This is the second time that they're going to have a track-based uh, system for Winter Village. The other one was the train uh, with the train station. I think it would be cool to, well, one, you can motorize this. You can go out and buy the motorized parts, which cost you about $75 to 100 bucks which so double the cost of what you should be spending on something like this. I would do a train track, just a straight line between one part of the city to the next, like down the street, uh, because you can have the train going around the whole thing. I think it's a, it's a nice set. The two buildings are well decorated with uh, a good bit of snow on top, and they've got some nice little um, rooms inside with the kids' room and two different shops. Overall, great set. I'm excited to see this come out and get my hands on it to add to the Winter Village. Now, a few days ago, we got some leaked images that are very exciting for LEGO Star Wars fans out there. This is going to be the upcoming UCS Razor Crest. Now, the Razor Crest is a fuller scale for sure, uh, as it's got a full-size cockpit for minifigures instead of just the single seat like the playset. This set is going to be sold for six hundred dollars it is six thousand one hundred eighty seven pieces well actually i don't know if it's six hundred six to seven hundred we'll actually see once it's officially revealed it's supposed to hit stores on october 3rd so i expect it to be released or revealed today or sometime next week 
It's going to be 23 inches long, so it's pretty big. And there's a few fun things that you can get with it. It's the uh, there's a buildable blurg. We've got Mando, Baby Yoda, and it's Baby Yoda carrier, uh, the hovering one, which I think is really cool. And I um, I like it. The only thing is I did make some waves that they could have picked something else. This only has been around for two years now. And there's like a thousand other Ultimate Collector Series sets that they could have made. Now, I will get this. I, I love the ship. It's, it was only in one season. So there's that. Or no, was it in two? Yeah, it was in two seasons. Sorry, two seasons of the show. And, well, God, they could have done so much. I want the Naboo Starfighter uh, or Starship. Either one. Like a, there's, there's so many other ones. The... Uh, droid control ship from the uh, separatists there are options and they chose the uh, just the ship that everybody loves because it's such in the news right now Ugh. eventually i think they'll catch up that maybe we want some other sets and i guess we'll see what may the fourth brings the lego diorama sets for 2023 are as i said there's going to be the speeder bike and um the throne room from the Death Star. But the other one that they're considering is the throne room for Jabba's palace. The only problem is it's going to be pretty big. I mean, Jabba's not small. And if they want to do the details just right, it's going to be large. And they say it's $100, but I I don't know. Maybe this is just a rumor and we won't see something like this. Because they did just do Jabba's uh, palace throne room well not with java i guess it was bib fortuna's throne room and then boba fett's i will have to stand by and see what they do for the uh, dioramas they did three so i expect they'll do three again and then uh, you can decide for yourself if you want it speaking of the dioramas there actually was a diorama build that you can go check out on youtube which i'll post the link in the description a famous lego builder by jk brickworks did a live build and actually a small video that you can find where he motorized it so it can close it and compact with just a, a little motor on the back very cool and a very simple build if you'd like to do that and i wish they kind of did that before because otherwise just moving them independently just seems like more work and more pieces either way very fun and you can modify yours as you see fit Lego Harry Potter has some rumored sets coming out. Some of them focused around house banners, which I'm going to guess are going to be the taller scale um, art series, kind of like they did just recently for some of the flowers. We'll see how detailed they are, but that or it's going to be similar to the box or the cases, uh, suitcases that they did. Another is the room of requirements, and another is the Black Lake Try Wizard Challenge, which Black Lake, they'll probably do the big stand, maybe, and then some of the underwater scenes. But the room of requirements could be cool. Maybe there'll be an action where they can perform their spells and move things around. Looking forward to seeing what they do with uh, Harry Potter this year and continue to make some really, really cool sets. Another thing, Harry Potter, we've talked about it extensively on multiple occasions, the Harry Potter Hogwarts Express uh, Masters series, or whatever we're going to call it, Collector's series, that's what they're calling it now. They were concerned, not only about the color and all this other stuff, but the size that they stated. We did, not, we did have some conversations here in the office as some people were concerned whether people at home would actually have room to display this. Uh, that also played a part. How long do we even want to go with our models or how big do we want to go with our, um, or how big do we want to get with our models? Similar to they've had some really big ones, the Titanic, the Imperial Star Destroyer, the AATAT or ADAT. It's, everything's getting bigger and we're running out of space. It is very large, and if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's a little better to display than the Harry Hogwarts Castle. But still, it takes up some space. So uh, in consideration for these sets, we'll see how they continue to move forward to change that. That's all we have this week for the breaking news. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you listening and learning a lot about what LEGO's done this week in the news. Hopefully we'll see some of these sets come out soon. And October's right around the corner and there's a ton of sets. So I will talk about more of them next week. But you can check those out in your local LEGO store and enjoy buying and building LEGO sets. 
But now from this point, I'm going to move into the new segment I'm trying, a LEGO review. And this review is going to be on Andor because Andor just came out and I want to see if you guys like this set or not. And I, I want to talk about it from my own personal perspective. This is going to be the Ambush on Ferrex. This is a 9 plus set, 679 pieces with 455 VIP re uh, reward points and it's set number 75338. Comes in a cost of $70. Now, if you know Star Wars, this is kind of like a miniaturized Republican gunship, like very small. It does have the same body style uh, with a cockpit on top, a kind of wedge shape with wings out the back and the engines. So if you think somebody shot a shrink ray at this and, well, uh, that's what it turned out to be. Now, I will say the lines are very clean. They did a great job in getting the angles just right, having them intersect in a way that you're not having huge gaps. And I um, I just personally don't know how I feel about it. I'm going to have to see what it looks like more so in the Andor series, which I'm only two episodes in, and I believe they show up in the third. It also comes with a speeder bike that I guess they use in episode three as well. That is, well, it's the ambush on Ferrex, so I'm going to guess that this is literally from episode three. We have Cassian Andor, um, excuse me, we have three minifigures, Cassian Andor, uh, Luthen Rel, and Cyril Karn. And so Cassian Andor is our main character, as he's Andor, uh, and he's got some garb on just from walking around. He's this legend, not legendary, but iconic jacket that he wears. He has a full beard and long hair, um, and we've seen that throughout pretty much all the way through Rogue One, which came out a few years ago. His gun is the special uh, long, uh, short barrel, but double barreled gun, and it's uh, gray. We have Luthien Rao, which is a new character, and it seems like he is part of the re uh, resistance, or excuse me, rebellion at this point. Resistance came later. And it has a black gun, and he has a long coat on. But in the show, he has one. But I'm surprised that they didn't put it with a cloth. The cloth, they've gotten really stingy on, and I wish they would bring those back more. And Cyril Karn is a, um Imperial security guard. Um, it's a contracted security system that uh, or company that they use to patrol these outer planets that the... Um, the Imperial Empire doesn't really care about, so they're just paying these people off. He's a very interesting character. Well, they all are interesting characters. And so these are included in the Lego set. So those are, the, I think, the three most main characters we'll see in the series. So for a set that is $70, that's not a bad cost. Um, the dropship itself it does open up. It does have a cockpit area and then seating in the midsection for other troops which they do bring these contract hires to come with them to fight. Then on top, it does have a gun system where it has a main turret style gun and then these little Lego shooters, which they're the newest Lego shooter that shoot uh, one by one round uh, tiles, which I don't think I have one of these yet, but this is like the fourth iteration of doing a style like this. But... Um, I, I think it's a nice addition for a play style. It does move around on a turn style, and then it does have a gun in the front, just a single gun. The gunship had the two rotating ones, and the packaging looks normal. Um, hopefully it's not too big for the set like this. The wings do fold up in the back, and the speeder bike is, well, it's a speeder bike. There's not much you can really do anymore. They're just continuing to throw these in. They're like, ah, oh, we need to get the piece count up. Uh, let's throw it in a speeder. Although this one is in the series and I guess is utilized in that scene. So I, I get that. That one makes sense. But a lot of the times they just throw in these speeders just to do that. I think they did that in some one of the Mando sets or, or something. Um, but for the cost of $70, I, I would pass. It's a lower piece count. It's not something I'm interested in, at least by the, the style-wise. It's nice that they have done two Andor sets, and um, we can talk about the next Andor set next week if you'd like me to. But overall, I think it's a well-designed ship. I think the characters are good. The speeder is nice. But it's just not a set that I'm interested in. 
I think that there are people that will really love Andor and see this as an iconic ship and will want it, and that's what it's there for. And especially having a little bit of playability to it, you can collect the minifigures because everyone wants to do that with Star Wars, which is an impossible feat as there are so many of them. So I will post the pre-order page in the description. You can get this and it'll be coming out in October. So it should be coming out, I believe, Monday, October 3rd. And you can pick that up or, well, not pick it up. If you pre-order it, they'll ship it to you. So that was my first podcast review of a Lego set. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you stick around to listen to it. And if you have, congratulations, you just won the prize. Whoever stuck around this long, I want you to send me a message saying I made it through the latest breaking news episode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a Lego set. This is going to be part of a new series that I'm going to do. It's Lego Build Off. We're going to both have the same set. We're going to come together, dump all the packages packaging out, no package one, two, or three, and we're going to build and see who can do it the fastest. It'll be on YouTube or YouTube or Instagram live, but just let me know and send me a message on back to brick two on Instagram or through email. I will throw you guys into a drawing and we'll see who gets to be in one of the first people on that segment. All right. I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there and go build something. 